Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to identify whether you have a vertical stretch or a compression of a quadratic function. So for this one, it's specifically for quadratic functions. This does apply to all other functions too. I'm just going to use a quadratic function to make the demonstration a little bit easier to see. So a vertical stretch occurs if you have a number that you're multiplying your function by, and if a the absolute value of a is greater than one, the graph is going to be stretched vertically by a factor of a. Um, if the value in the front is between zero and one, then you are going to compress it vertically by a factor of a. If you think about this in terms of what is happening, a vertical stretch would be like pulling taffy. As you pull taffy up, it gets skinnier, so your graph is going to look skinnier when you do a vertical stretch. A vertical compression happens if you're pushing it down. So if you're pushing down the graph, it's going to get wider. So that's essentially what is going to happen. If you have a negative in there, then that's going to be a reflection, but that doesn't count for the stretches and compressions. So that's why I have the absolute value in there is that the number itself is what is either stretching or compressing. So let's look at a couple examples so we can see the visual representation of what is happening. So in the first one, we have f of x equals 2x squared. So like I said, we are using a quadratic function. So our parent function for this is f of x equals x squared. Okay, um, so this one, since 2 is greater than one, this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So it's gonna go up twice as fast, so it's going to get skinnier than what you originally had. So our parent function, f of x equals x squared, basically what's happening is if I take my x coordinate of zero and I plugged in zero to this, I would have zero squared. If I plug in one, one squared is one, two squared is four. So one, two, three, four. And then three squared, if you continued, would be nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, on the negative side, you would have the same thing. If I square negative one, negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative two times negative two or negative two squared would give me positive four and then negative three squared would be nine. And so basically everything else would be off the screen. So this is our parent function that we are starting with. Okay, and so what's happening when we multiply by two, we're changing the output. So the reason it's a vertical stretch is because we're changing the y coordinate rather than changing the inside, the x coordinate. So I'm basically taking my y coordinate and multiplying it by two. I'm really doing two times zero is what's happening. So two times zero is still zero, so my value would still be here. Okay. Um, when I go to one, two times one would be two, so it would be a little bit skinnier. Okay, um, two times four would give me eight. So we would be here. And if we go to the other side, it's going to do the same thing. So here would be two, and then this would be eight. So you can see that the graph just gets a little bit narrower than it was before. Okay, it got skinnier, it stretched it up. Okay. Um, so whenever your value is greater than one, then your vertical stretch is going to go up twice as fast as originally it was. Okay, same thing for this one. My parent function for this equation is still going to be the f of x equals x squared. Okay, this time one half is between zero and one. So this one is going to be a vertical compression.
by a factor of one half. So it's gonna go up half as fast as origi the original one. So again, our parent function is at zero, zero, one, one, and then two, four. And if you wanted to do the three, you would be at nine. Okay, the other side is gonna look the same way because negative one squared is one negative two squared is four, and negative three squared is nine. So our parent function looks like this. And then if we look at our compression, let me pick a different color here. All right, so our compression is going to be half as much. So if we're looking at our output, our output is our y coordinate. So half of zero is still zero. Half of one would be one half. Half of four would be two. And then half of nine would be four and a half. So one, two, three, four and a half. And then if we do the same thing on the other side, um, my y coordinate is one, so half of that would be half. Half of four would be two. And half of nine would be four and a half. Okay. Um, so we can see that our parent function isn't going up as quickly. It's going to be a little bit wider. It's pushing it down. So if you think about it as a force, if I were pushing something down, that's what compress means to do, then it's going to make it a little bit wider. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.